Hey, good day, everybody. My name's Roberto from Fingeri Wood Fired Ovens here in Melbourne, Australia. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody uh, that subscribed to this channel. I, I originally built this channel to just to help my customers. I sell uh, pre-cast and brick wood fired ovens, and I sell the Alpha range of stainless steel wood fired ovens. And I built this channel to help answer the sort of questions I get over and over and over again. So thank you all for those who have subscribed, and I've recently reached a thousand, over a thousand subscribers. So I want to thank you again for that. Um, so it encourages me to just keep doing a few more videos. So this video is going to be about the difference between a wood and a gas-fired oven, or a precast and a stainless steel type oven. What are the main differences? Which one should you get? I'm just going to hopefully show you a little bit about both and how they operate, and hopefully to help you make that decision. So earlier today I made my dough, I made a portage yesterday and then I made the dough. After I made the dough, I prepared the sauce. I used a San Mazzano tomato and I um, put it through a mooly and then strain it. I prepared the cheese. If you use a, uh, a cow's milk mozzarella, if you're a gelato or a buffalo mozzarella, uh, it's best to chop that up beforehand and let it drain. Um, milk will come out of it. Uh, you don't want too much soggy stuff on the pizza, which is why we drain the tomatoes as well. And then I got my ingredients together and I have this handy little, little thing that I can bring outside with, with some ingredients. Okay, so we're going to light up the wood-fired oven and the gas-fired oven. So if you come and have a look, it's a good idea to always pre-stack your wood-fired oven. I'll put some egg carton underneath with some kidling and then my big logs and I'll give that a light. It's basically as simple as that. Like I say, pre-stack it when you, once you finish cooking pre-stack it, helps the wood dry out, a little bit of egg carton, a little bit of kidling. If you're not home, get someone a frail match on there, light that up. Now I'll show you, we're going to light up the gas fired up. Turn on your gas bottle, put this up to pilot. We'll hold that in for a little while, let the gas come up to the pilot light. Light the pilot. Now you hold that knob in for about 15-20 seconds. We'll just turn that on. And we've got the, the gas fire lit. So we've lit the wood and we've lit the gas. It's around about 2.30 in the afternoon. They're both lit. I'll get back to this one in about an hour and a half um, and get that ready for pizza. And we'll get back to this gas one in about 30 minutes. And it'll be ready for pizza but I'm going to cook some bread in this one first. In this oven to cook the bread, or cook my pizzas all night, I might throw an extra piece of wood in there. When I'm finished cooking my pizzas, I'll put the door on, and this will hold its heat until tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, I'll come out, I'll be able to sweep this oven out, and it should be around the 200 to 250 Celsius, and that's when I'll cook my bread in this oven. But in this oven, we're gonna be cooking the bread within about half an hour, and then the pizza's immediately after. So a little bit more versatile. All right, so gas oven wise, it's, been, it's only been about 10, maybe 15 minutes tops. I just want to check my floor temperature because I want to make bread. So I want to try to get a, a pretty consistent heat of around the 250, between 250 and 300 degrees Celsius to get my bread cooked. So I've got a floor temperature here of 280. 290, 270, 260, 250. That's enough, that's enough for bread. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn the gas oven down. And I turn this down between, between the pilot light and the full flame. If we, if we turn it down to low, I found it's still too hot. So I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit 
a bit less than low. We put our door back on. This gauge was well over 500 when I came out here, like I say, after about 10 minutes. So we want this gauge to come down. We want to stabilize this oven, but anything between 250 to 280, let's say, to be a bit more precise. So we've, tu we've turned that gas burner down and we're going to give it a few minutes. And we're going to come back and check this temperature on our gauge. And if we get to around the 270, 280, um, I'm happy with that. If you get 250, 260, I'm still happy with that. Check your floor, should be around 250. Check this gauge here, should be around 250. Once you've sort of balanced it, the act, we'll put some bread in there. Should only take you another five to 10 minutes to do so. Meanwhile, let's have a look at our wood oven. Our wood oven. So that's been around about the same. Like I say, I reckon it's been about 15 minutes roughly. Um, it's burning nicely. You can see there's the inside of that dome is black with soot. So it's burning nicely. It hasn't, I haven't touched that. That'll be a bit longer to go. So let's come back in a few, about another five minutes and let's watch this gas oven temperature stabilise. Okay, so it's been another 10 minutes, 20 minutes since we, uh, we lit both of these fires. So my gauge here is showing 300 Celsius. The floor on the far side of the oven where I want to put the bread, showing 235 to 240 Celsius. Close enough, I'm going to prepare the bread, put the bread in this oven. So the bread's been sitting in this container for about two hours. Put that on there without touching it. You get yourself a very sharp razor blade. We're going to give it a cut. We're not going to mess with that too much. We're going to come back to that in about 20 to 30 minutes just to check out branding. We might have to turn it around. Let's see how we go. But uh, that bread's in. And we'll be back in about 20 minutes to check on that. How's that wood fire going? That's still burning well. I might collapse that a bit. Try to get a bit more flame out of that. So I just played with that water bit, collapsed it a little bit, moved it around just to get those flames roaring a bit. Need that to need to get some heat into that. With any cement oven, especially if you haven't used it for a while, you don't want to fire it up full blast straight away. Gradually build the heat up in a cement oven. If there's any moisture in it for whatever reasons, if you've got some cracks in the render, it's out there and it's been getting wet, always at the start gradually heat it up. Um, it's only been half an hour, so now I can afford to get that just to play with that and to get that a bit more ro roaring. We want to really get some heat into this oven now. So this will still be at least an hour before it's ready. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes since we put the bread in. Um, and it's been 45 minutes since we've lit up the wood-fired oven and the gas-fired oven in total time. Let's have a look how our bread's coming up. The bread's looking fantastic. The bread is looking really good. I'm going to turn that around just to get some nice even colour on it. And we'll give that 10 more minutes, that should be plenty. That'll be 30 minutes for the bread. And 45 minutes as well. The dome's starting to turn white up the top, as you can see. Um, I've had to come out and just reshuffle that wood again. I have got a piece of wood in there warming up. I'm going to throw that on to start to crank this heat up. All right, so that bread's been in there for 30 minutes. So I'm going to take that bread out now. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, nothing wrong with that. If you give it a tap, it's supposed to sound hollow. Cooked on the bottom, cooked on the top. That bread's ready. That was 30, uh, 30 minutes inside this oven. Been able to regulate that oven pretty good. Uh, it's pretty easy to turn on and off. That's it, so I'm gonna sweep out the, um, the, the flour in there. It hasn't burnt because the 250 to 300 Celsius flour doesn't burn and we're going to crank that up onto full, ready to cook a pizza at 450. We're now going to turn that up to full blast. We're going to put our door on, let the floor get up to about 350, and then we're going to cook pizza in that. So it's been one hour, we've made our bread. Here it is. 
beautiful loaf of bread cooked underneath. Nice. I'll cut that up a bit later on. It's got to cool down before we cut that up. Our wood fired oven is going nicely. Quick close up of our wood fired oven after one hour. We'll put another piece of wood in there. The dome is starting to turn white. You can see it's got a bit larger. I've got a piece of wood warming up, ready to go. Uh, as soon as that breaks down into coals, we'll move it to one side. Um, and then, yeah, within half an hour, that should be hopefully ready for pizza as well. I'll take this point just to, to, to tell you that the, the precast oven, whether it was wood or gas, it's about the same heat up time. Gas does not heat up quicker than wood. And the same with the gas fired oven. If this was a wood fired oven or a gas fired oven, gas does not up, heat up quicker than wood. Wood does not really heat up quicker than gas. They're around about the same. One hour and 20 minutes. I've moved my fire over to the side in the wood oven. Put in my wood rack, getting ready. Move the fire over to one side, throwing a fresh piece of wood on there. That's now roaring, and this oven dome will turn white within the next 10 odd minutes or so. Uh, that's the sort of how you gradually heat up that oven. Uh, the gas, I've turned it up to full, full, full bore, and I'm going to make a pizza. Uh, the floor's already heated up, ready to go, so I'm just going to quickly make a pizza, I'll put that in. But this video is not about cooking pizzas, just to show you the difference between a stainless steel oven and a refractory oven, a gas oven and a wood oven. Um, gas and wood, like I say, basically no much difference and between refractory and stainless steel, it's just about time. It, they, they both do the same sort of things. I don't think you'll be unhappy with what one will do over the other. That pizza is done. I will put my door on. These stainless steel ovens have a 25 mil thick floor tile. So by Putting the door on with that with a burner on high and the stainless steel radiates onto the floor, the floor recovers pretty quick. So by the time I go and make another pizza, I'll be able to throw this one back in. Uh, the floor tiles cool down quickly, but they recover quickly. Inside a wood fire oven, because they're 50 mil compressed brick tiles, they take a lot longer to heat up, but they retain their heat for a, hot, a lot longer. By the time you take one out, if you had one ready, you could put it back in. You don't need that recovery time. But the recovery time of this, we're talking one or two minutes that it takes you to, to make a pizza, not a lot of recovery time. So, um, yeah, let's, um, let's give this wood fire oven a bit longer. We'll cook a pizza in there as well. And uh, we'll, we'll get to the end of this video. Thank you, see you soon. Oh, before I go. That is very well cooked underneath. There is not a problem with that. Soft and crunchy, as Vito would say. That is a, a very nice looking pizza. All right, let's fire what we'll get. The next pizza we'll cook in this. I think that's enough on the gas. The next pizza we'll cook is in this one. See how this bread came out? Pizza, get out of the gas oven. So that's a pizza out of the gas oven. That's a bread out of the gas oven. So an hour and a half, we're done. It's all over for the gas oven. I'm gonna give that wood oven a few more minutes. I'm gonna put the wood over into the wood rack and we're gonna cook a pizza in there and we'll compare the difference if there is any. Okay, so with the wood, we've got the floor up to about 420, just a tiny bit too hot. 
just going to, with the damp towel, just slightly mop that down a bit. Also helps clean the floor. So that's floors at about 380. I grab myself a little piece of wood. Just going to pre that, heat that up while I make this pizza and we'll throw the pizza in. Pizza's in. Put my little piece of wood on. So that'll flame up now, which it has. And we'll give this pizza a quick cook. Just to finish, wood fired, all gas fired, precast, all stainless steel. Within an hour and a half, we have made some bread and cooked our first pizza in the stainless steel type oven. We're now cooking in an hour and a half. We've got this fire ready. We're starting to cook our first pizza in here. Taste wise, I don't think, I can't taste the difference. I've had them before. I can't taste the difference between wood or gas, but in a gas oven, you can always put a little piece of wood on the far side of your oven that will eventually catch and smoke um, without too much problem. Um, you don't want to put a, a big pile of wood in there because you don't want wood and ash going out all over your gas burner unless there's a cover for it and it's specifically designed to do so. Didn't take long at all. There it is. My favourite anchovy and chilli by the way. They look the same. Underneath, as I said, this one got a bit too hot, so it's a little bit burnt, but not too bad. Very edible. So, I hope this video was helpful um, to show you, help you decide do you get a stainless steel oven or a precast oven, you get a gas oven or a wood oven. So, I hope this, you found this information useful and, and help you decide what sort of oven is best for you. Like I say, if you're in a small terrace and you don't want to smoke at the neighbours, you'd probably go for gas. Um, if you've got a big backyard and you want to cook for lots of people and you want to hold heat for a long time, you'll probably go for precast. So if you've got any questions, please leave some comments and I'll always get back to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, um, support me and I'll just keep doing more and more videos on wood-fired ovens. And uh, if you liked it, please leave a thumbs up. Thank you very much, Roberto from Fineri Wood-Fired Ovens in Melbourne, Australia. Thank you and I'll see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.